home in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Rahana, to Film in Minnesota. My guest today. (laughs) I thought you were my guest today. What's happening? Yes. I'm your guest. Yes. You're my guest. So. It's accurate. Yeah. It's going to get weird. This is our end of year podcast episode. Which is kind of crazy. Like, I, I know that everyone says it, and it's cliche, and it's annoying, and quite frankly, dumb, because happens every fucking like the first of all there's going to be swearing in this episode disclaimer if you don't feel comfortable with that please turn us off now we appreciate your listen um i feel like every year i say it every year everyone says it and everyone's like stop saying that and i get it i totally get it but where in the fuck did the year go (laughs) i don't understand uh I, i don't i have no idea this entire year is just a blob of question marks in my head like I, I don't know we've had very diametrically opposed years too i think between the two of us it's been uh mm-hmm. interesting and then smack dab in the middle of the year we went to a twins game so we did <laughs> <laughs> which was a nice break from the craziness of the area yeah. yeah it was nice to get outside and just mm-hmm. watch the game yeah. a game and one of our awesome uh guests was able to join us too and hang out yeah, that was super fun. Yeah, we'll we'll do the uh, group twins game of our alumni next time. <laughs> yeah, I think Open you even. Sh- no kidding. I think you even shared a video of us singing along with the. Uh, yeah. The stadium music together. That was. That's what I do. I record. Not things. at all embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> I drink and I record <laughs> things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you were all out of drinks. Yeah. But yeah, that was super fun. Yeah, I guess um, <clears throat> we we got to do the Twin Cities Film Fest opening night event. Mm-hmm. Which was awesome. Attend. It's such a lovely space and a lovely team. Um, yeah. So it was really wonderful getting to like be there and support that and participate Um and and you know be there for that film opening night film that which was really cool um yeah i really thoroughly enjoyed that yeah me too and i got to meet jer so that was nice that was the first time i met him yep yeah he doesn't leave the uh leave the apartment very often um (laughs) (laughs) that was this is one of his few nights where he was allowed outside um just kidding just kidding uh but yeah that was that was really fun getting to kind of blend worlds a little bit yeah how did it feel to be back in that environment like around film people um honestly it if like i felt like an imposter because i've been behind you know a microphone for so long and not Mm. physically by other creative human beings like that um yeah so i I was i was like oh they're all gonna know that like you shouldn't be here like like five years ago, uh, seven years ago, 10 years ago, God damn it, I'm old. Um, I would have totally fit in there and be like, yeah, people, things, stuff, woo. And now I'm like, I do a podcast and talk to other people who do the things. Right. <laughs> I don't do the thing. So it was, it was interesting, but it was a lot of fun. Um, Cause those environments have just like a, such, such a strong atmosphere and feeling to them. And it was really nice being back in that. Um, and everyone's so nice running into like old friends that haven't seen and we ran into Jason I don't think I've seen him in like 14 years wow 13 years something like that yeah wow so I mean because it was I I knew him when I first started uh here in the city so it was yeah it it was awesome Hmm. it was really really fun how about you how was it being like physically around well, one, so many people, but also so many like filmmakers and creative people. Yeah. The night we were there, I didn't really know anyone. So it was just kind of like, mm-hmm. I, I maybe they were just attendees, which is great. Um, they're there to catch the opening studio films. Well, not studio, but, you know, yeah, indie studio-ish films. Yeah, um, yeah that 
that was kind of nice and obviously getting to meet Jer and uh the other night with the industry mix mixer that you see I saw more familiar faces like we've had on the podcast and yeah um hopefully future people will have on the podcast so yeah um yeah, it was nice to actually see people because normally I would see people on set or something or um, in their films, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but other than like Z Fest, like Z Fest 48, you go, you watch movies. It's like, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And you get to actually see the people that were in the movies, which is always cool. So, mm-hmm. um, and then like things like the 50 50, who we've, talk to on the show like all these people that we've had this year Mm -hmm. um yeah so it was kind of nice to be in that environment again because i don't think i'm gonna get a production out this year Mm -hmm. uh, which is really sad because it's like yeah yeah uh, a lot of ebbs and flows this year Mm -hmm. um for me i think you too um just yeah waves High highs, low lows, not a lot of in between. And it it felt like it was just constantly fluctuating, hmm. um, which is probably why one, it felt like it went so fast. But right. two, it felt like nothing, like so much happened, but it feels like nothing happened because it was just constant, constant peaks. Right. Yeah. You know? And we both lost people this year, and it was just mm-hmm. kind of like, yeah, those things are part of the trauma of life i guess you know so. yeah yeah absolutely but then you know there are good moments my uh my baby sister got married yeah it was crazy um so i mean yeah there's just trying to focus on on those good good moments out of the very quick but very long year <laughs> right <laughs> yeah yeah i feel like you've you've had some exciting things that maybe they you know you won't have production in 2021 but um you know you have things coming up now right that that are exciting yeah um also released the sound of winter this year Mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of december here so if you haven't checked that out it's on youtube the sound of winter on colliding pictures youtube it's awesome please please check it out like subscribe (laughs) it helps the channel um (laughs) Cause it all, that's all you Google slash YouTube understands is numbers. So, um, every little bit counts. So, but I've noticed it's hitting its mark with France. So obviously it's a French speaking film. So, which um, makes sense. Yeah. Which is <laughs> kind of gratifying, you know, it's like, yeah. um, I don't speak French fluently or conversationally at all, but Obviously, I've been to France. I love it, but and mm-hmm. they they have such a rich art art community, or you know, support for the arts, and mm-hmm. uh, I really dig that. Yeah, um, that's something they really got going for them. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that and the baguettes and the coffee and cool. <laughs> wine. two of my favorite, th- three of my favorite <laughs> things in the world, <laughs> right there. <laughs> croissant <laughs> yeah bread wine coffee not in that specific order right <laughs> um yeah and i have production pending mm-hmm. for my next film short film dana versus judy um which you will be a part of helping yeah. rahana because yeah, yeah, yeah. yes <laughs> Tell us, tell us, Alan, what is this Dana and Dana vs. Judy about? Uh, it's a mix. What can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mix of a fight scene and a conversation between two characters that are being introduced here. So um, part of a bigger world that I'm building, but this mm-hmm. is one of the stops I want to make. Hopefully the second stop will work too, maybe with one of our previous guests. But uh, Ooh, stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, these are, uh, I will really want to get into making more action film based films. And mm-hmm. this is kind of my first go at that kind of, so yeah, a lot of preparation for this. So I believe not, it. 
not a huge script, but I mean, the prep work behind this, I want it to be good. I want it to hit its mark. So Mm -hmm. hopefully it'll be in time for a competition, local competition. If not, that's okay. I just want the film, like I said, to be good. So Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Which makes sense. How about you? You've got some good things here. I I don't know. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I, um, yeah, I mean, most of my year that like stands out for me is just um, really surrounding like work, my day job. Um, I had the opportunity and was, um, you know, grateful that I was able to actually promote twice at work this year. Um, just due to, you know, crazy circumstances, uh, people promoting above me and, and things and kind of went for it. Uh, so that, that happened, um, you know, having said that I, I, I work a lot. And so it kind of sometimes feels like that's the majority of what I can pinpoint out of the year. Um, but that also, you know, helps to, helps me you know, identify that next year I want to be able to focus more on, on the, the little things outside of that. Um, mm. So that'll be good and participate in, um, in those other things that will, you know, spark joy, if you will. Uh, so, right. you know, like helping out with Dana versus Judy and things like that. So I'm really excited to, to move into the new year um, doing more of those things for me. Um, while also having these good opportunities. So, yeah, I guess we both need to think about our either focuses or resolutions, so to speak, Mm -hmm. resolutions, but you know, I prefer to call them focuses, but uh, yeah, me too. Yeah. But yes, sparks of joy. So let's talk about what we watched this year. Huh? (laughs) So much. (laughs) I'm pretty sure I watched all of the things, every of the things. Right. Um, Start with movies. Okay, so starting with movies, um, as everyone who listens to this or has listened to at least two episodes of this, because I talk about it nonstop, I'm obsessed with the MCU. Mm-hmm. Some people don't like that. That's fine. Mind your business. Um, <laughs> I, I love it. I'm a nerd. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't hurt anyone. There, we, we were like, this was a good year for the MCU. We got three awesome movies. I mean, they also will get to series, but we also had a few series out of it. It was really, really fun. It was great. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I'm actually really sad that I only saw each of the movies once. I really wanted to see each of them more than that because I thought they were really good. Um, Agreed. Black Widow honestly should have come out a long ass time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm glad that it finally did. Loved Florence Pugh. Mm-hmm. She is so wonderful and she's so funny. That's how you say her name, right? Oh, now I'm now I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, did, <laughs> what did I just do? Uh-oh. I think it's um because she was also yeah Florence Pugh because she was also in Little Women. Yes, um, that's which right. Which was also absolutely just lovely movie, but we talked about that last year. Um, but yeah, so she's in it and she's so funny and she does so so well. Um, made me have just a giant crush on her. And yeah, so I mean, Black Widow was amazing. Shang Chi, Legend mm-hmm. of the Ten Rings was. I, the more I think about that movie, um, and even just my initial re- like reaction to it, it's up there for me with Black Panther. Yeah, it's like yeah. probably one of my top like two favorite MCU films. Like it was so well done. The story is so rich. I loved the fact that they like kind of brought you in and out. Like they, it was very fluid between timelines and things like that. Um, I just thought they did an excellent job in the Eternals as well. I know not everybody liked it, but <laughs> I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm ready I, to fight you on that. Yes. <laughs> I just, I love all the actors. I love the characters that they built, the worlds that they built, the, and even that again, back and forth between timelines and where you're at. Um, I thought they did a really good job with it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I know that there are some people who I've heard they were like, you could totally, you knew what the twist was going to be. 
such a, you probably know what the twist is going to be in every movie. So you're just trying to ruin things for me because I'm dumber than you and don't see the twist coming. I don't care. I didn't see the twist coming. I got excited. It was wonderful. I thought it was great. Uh, Which one? <laughs> in the Eternals. Um, let's spoil. We're, we're going to spoil alert here. So if you haven't seen it. We'll... Yeah. So Rob Stark is the bad guy. Um, <laughs> I'm calling him Rob Stark because that's what I remember him by. Oh, I don't right. Remember him by? Because I'm like thinking. Didn't even remember. <laughs> wait a minute. I'm thinking like Tony Stark. I'm like, is he a relative of Tony Stark? And I'm like, no. oh, I just, <laughs> yeah. I I remember. I don't remember a lot of the characters' names, I'll, but the things that stood out to me were that Jon Snow was in it, Rob Stark was in it, and their co-love interest yes. is named Cersei. And I cannot even to this day get over that. I love it so much. I wish that, I hope that someday there's like a video that will leak of them like reading that script for the first time together and like looking at each other and just being like, Can we do this? That's going to get me to take you to. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, This is weird, but yeah. That's funny. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Like it's just like whoever was writing that, I'm sure they were like, oh, we're going to fuck these guys up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be great <laughs> yeah uh but you know yeah. who we need <laughs> <laughs> right oh i agree with me... you black widow i love mm-hmm. rachel vice in that um oh yes. mm-hmm. michelle yao um and then the eternals sadly for me i just didn't get as much satisfaction out of it um i I appreciate I appreciate Chloe Zhao for mm-hmm. like her patience in the film, like kind of letting the moments breathe more. Mm-hmm. Most Marvel movies don't do that, especially like Avengers. Like, yeah, it's like go go go, like a lot of action stuff, and mm-hmm. um, I appreciate it for what it is. And but for me, there were still so many holes in the story that I wanted, you know, answers to. I think. That's what left me unsatisfied. So maybe it comes later. But um, what were the? I'm curious as to what those gaps were. Well, they just kind of glossed over the Thanos snap and um, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's like that's like a huge part of the old MCU that -hmm. you just didn't even talk about. And it's like, why? How disrespectful! You know, it's like this is what made your movie possible, Mm -hmm. and you don't even acknowledge it somehow. It's like, uh... I mean, it was in there for a moment. Like Selma Hayek brought it up when she went to a Rob moment. Stark. Yeah. I nothing happened from it, name. but you know, it's like, <laughs> right. It's like, Oh, we yeah. don't interfere, but you do interfere. I mean, <laughs> yeah, come on, you know, and yeah. Thanos is from like that galaxy life, mm-hmm. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I think it'll be interesting moving forward with the next whatever film that is they do for those characters for that like story um, yeah now that they have the rights to all of marvel so mm-hmm. yeah because i think he's technically or at least in the comics he's a deviant which is who they do go after and so then mm. why didn't they is he not right. in the mcu and if not why but then dude that shows up at the end which I have a whole thing about that in a second um yeah. is his brother so one i didn't know he had a brother two like I don't know. It's weird. It'll be interesting. Um, also, since we're spoilers McGee here today, uh, the fact that Harry Styles is in it, I, Harry Styles is lovely. He's wonderful. I like him. I like some of his music. I admit it. I give, I care not at all. Um, <laughs> but like, he, I'm like, you're watching a movie. You just paid how much money, you know, like it's, we paid $16 or whatever for tickets. And then we paid how much for like $20 for, soda and popcorn you're doing the things and you're there and it's an experience and then this character comes on screen and for almost the entire end credit scene or like end scene there all it was was teenagers screaming in the theater that's all it is i'm like i can't hear a gd thing that's happening which is saying something because it's a theater (laughs) because (laughs) all these kids are just like oh my god it's harris styles i'm like (laughs) I don't give it. Do I do that when Chris Evans goes on screen? No. And do I want to? Yes. Stop it. You're in a movie theater. You're not at home. Drives me nuts. So I legitimately, like, I don't actually know what they said in that scene. I know that he walked on and it got loud. 
I have no idea. I, the last scene of the damn movie, and I don't know what happened because it was so loud huh. in the theater. I, I don't know who or what that was. Okay, it's I guess so I just kind of. Oh wait, wait, no, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. What you're... It might have been an end credit scene. Um, I don't know. But yeah, he like walks in with somebody else or like a character or something. Uh, I think it's like an animated character or, or like CGI or something. And they walk in uh, as like the rest of the Eternals that have survived are like waiting for these two or whoever like got taken or something. Okay. And they're just like, no, they should be here by now. This is weird. And then these two walk in and I think they're like saying like, yeah, we know what happened. We could save the day or some stupid shit. And uh, I, don't, but I don't actually know. I don't know if that's actually what they're saying because I was in a theater with a bunch of 12 year olds apparently. And I don't know. So that's the one thing that I didn't particularly enjoy. Um, I feel like I just went off for like six minutes about that. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I, I again, no, Eternals. Kidding. I kind of took a. I kind of was like, eh, yeah. unless it's relevant later, I don't see the point of this. Because how do you miss a guy stealing all these Infinity Stones, and you're just like, eh, it's no big deal. Fifty percent of the galaxy gone. It's like, what? <laughs> Come on. We only yeah. care about these things in the planet. It's like, what? I mean, <laughs> I think the thing with MCU that I found is that nothing. They don't like miss something or forget something or not loop things together really really well on act like everything is very strictly on purpose every like well it used to be we'll see on purpose we'll see i can't imagine that that it's gonna they're gonna drop that i, I think it's gonna connect with like black panther because i remember the beginning of black panther mm -hmm. something goes into the earth like mm -hmm. that makes uh wakanda possible um the vibranium or whatever it is yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think that'll connect somehow with whatever the next iteration of Black Panther will be. Which I'm excited but nervous about. Yes. And then, speaking of which, we have like other musicians that were, did like No Time to Die for Bond, Billie Eilish's mm -hmm. musical theme, I guess, for the movie No Time yeah, to she, Die. Yeah, she did the theme. Yeah. Which I thought was really good. Mm -hmm. I liked that shit on Spotify real quick. <laughs> yeah. And the movie itself was excellent. Yeah. I really loved how they like really tied all of those together. Yeah, um, no, I want to go back. I want to be like, okay, where are the big themes here? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't remember anything that happened. And so before we went and saw No Time to Die, we decided to rewatch all of them. Because oh. there's, what, four or five before yeah. i don't remember now um so we rewatched them and i was so glad that we did because everything really really made sense oh. watching no time to die like it would have been fine i mean it's bond you'd be fine if you didn't rewatch them or if you had never watched them because it's still just a bond movie but it's such a good like well wrapped up story within those like specific uh i was gonna say episodes uh films that it it just it yeah it all yeah. really tied together well because you have like casino royales first and then i forget what came after that the one in the desert or with the water um mm -hmm. yeah with what's her face um yeah. <laughs> what's her face <laughs> uh yeah let's skyfall i remember yeah um, specter i think specter was the last one before yeah it was the last one I think yeah. that was just after Skyfall. Yep. Yeah, No Time to Die, Spectre, Skyfall, um, Quantum There's of Solace. Quantum of Solace, that's it. Yep, and then Casino Royale, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's really, really good though. Yeah. What was your favorite part? Mm. The one thing they've never done in a Bond film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> They killed Bond. Yeah. But Which, I, I, they killed a lot of people off. I mean, there's a few yeah. really favorite parts, like in Cuba with uh, Anna there. That was awesome. Her in that, that dress. That was so cool. Just wiping the floor with people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved them doing that film together, too, after they had done uh, Knives Out. I thought it was oh, really right. fun seeing mm -hmm. this new dynamic between those two. 
Yeah. And then uh, they killed Felix off. <gasps> Which that that is actually one moment I almost started crying in the theater. <laughs> I damn near started crying. Or yeah, it was in the theater. Um, I love him. I love Jeffrey Wright. Yeah. I was so sad. I was like, how dare you? He should be the only one left. <laughs> yeah, I was like, else. okay. Kids, I don't care. <laughs> okay, I think they're going to get out of this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess this is the last one. Rude. Because <laughs> I thought about it. I'm like, well, Skyfall, they killed M. And then Spectre became this thing. And then, because mm-hmm. M was there since Pierce Brosnan started. And yeah. Honestly, I thought that, I thought they were going to bring her back. The whole movie, I was like, she's going to oh, show yeah. up and just be like, you thought you could kill me? And then she didn't. I was like, damn it. Yeah, and she would have been like the mom of Rami Malek yeah. or something. I don't know. <laughs> right, just something. Yeah. Be like, how dare you go to your room? I don't know. Yeah, I was really sad about that. Yeah. And then, so um, yeah, the ending just like, mm-hmm. my, I was with my dad when we saw it. And yeah, he he teared up for that. So, I mean... Well, yeah. He's been watching Bond since, you know, Connery. So it's, you know, a long but, time. Yeah. How can you not? And I know there are a lot of people who I know are still probably very like specifically like Sean Connery or whoever is the best Bond, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um, Roger honestly, Moore. I, after these ro- wrapped up, I'm on the Daniel Craig is the best Bond train. I really am. Hmm. That's our, that's, that's a good argument. Um, yeah. yeah, they really made this series different and then they yeah. left it open for many different ways. You can go now. There are at least oh, yeah. three, maybe four ways you could make the new bond with, Yeah, which is either a person of color or a woman or both. And yep. it's just kind of like, Hmm, how are they going to do this now? Like what's mm-hmm. the next generation going to look like? Yeah. So. And I think it's going to be tricky because they also have to make sure that the right people take it on. Right. Because if they don't, one, they might just say, we don't want to, we don't want to take that on. We don't want to do that. And then just revert back to some stereotypical next bond and act like these five never happened, which would be infuriating. Um, but also you do kind of want to branch from what just happened you know, mm-hmm. like it, like you had mentioned in Eternals, you don't want to like gloss over it. Like right. this is huge. And because it leads to your ability to very easily transition into a totally different version of what Bond is and has ever been, um, you know, you want to pay some, some respect to that um, yeah. in a, in a really good way. So it'll and be they played with it in the movie. It was like 007 yeah. is now this lady and it's like well you could just call it 007 or you could call it bond technically maybe his daughter uh Mm -hmm. we don't get a full explanation on that but yeah i pretty much am sure that's what they were alluding to (laughs) 100 percent, yeah uh candy man came out this year i love dune and as of this recording we're waiting on the matrix but i would have watched by now because i'll watch it immediately Yeah. <laughs> I so as of right now, um yeah, it's not out, but the latest trailer just came out yesterday and oh my god, it looks so good. Uh, I can't, I just can't. Like I, Yeah. It looks I've been amazing. waiting for that. As like the first trailer came out, I was like, eh, okay, you know, there's no real substance to what the plot could be yet. And it was like that okay. Made it more intriguing. Yes and no, because I was worried that we're going to really botch the story on this because mm-hmm. it's like, that's not enough to get me interested in this again, quite or excited about it, that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm even more excited now that the second trailer came out, kind of revealing what this film really is after mm-hmm. the original trilogy. So 100%. I think that might be easy when it comes to movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like i get really excited about like uh, like trailers and stuff so easily yeah like that, like f- that first matrix epic. trailer yeah, yeah i was like this is gonna be awesome and now <laughs> in the second one i'm like this is gonna be even more awesome yeah and then like, the movie comes i'm gonna be like this is the best thing ever and if people are gonna be like it's all right they're like i can never <laughs> speak to you again ever 
oh. ever ever <laughs> slap yeah like rude get out of here <laughs> but i think yeah. uh yeah those things like these epic trailers are really exciting like star wars mm-hmm. when they release their trailers for the last yeah. trilogy is always an event um dune yeah. was kind of a thing and now dune 2 mm-hmm. coming up um yeah someday whenever they finish it whenever yeah. they actually do it we'll see if there's more matrixes coming cuz i mean yeah you never know yeah we still have our neo <laughs> yes i'm god i'm so curious as to what they're going to do yeah um there were quite a few good like fun movies this year too um and it what something that was really cool was at hbo i think we had touched on it at the beginning of the year but they really um they like picked one specific movie each month and streamed that live that was also going to be released in theaters which was really cool so we got movies like suicide squad wonder woman 84 which i know a lot of people didn't like but that's fine um space jam which um (laughs) (laughs) uh the the little things like there were Mm -hmm. so many films and the majority of them were phenomenal um some of them were just really fun and one of them you know space jam was just but that's fine um it's fine (laughs) so i i thought that that was a really cool idea i'm really bummed that they're not going to keep doing that i am but also i understand that that takes away from like the cast and the crew and the work that they did because they don't actually get reimbursed properly when mm. that happens. But okay, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But also, I want to see all the movies. All right, with ease. Well, I guess now the way movies, you know, cycle through so quickly, sixties mm-hmm. at sixty days after screen, it'll be on like a HBO Max or yeah. something. That's true. Because they want the exclusive so people go to their platforms so right which makes sense so it's just kind of like okay well you don't have to wait like six months till it gets there now it can just be there like now in christmas bond will be you know available digitally so to speak just so crazy yeah Yeah. and candy man uh one interesting thing about that um was just like um <laughs> my friend and I were we both saw it separately but we both noticed the same thing that like say his name you know is like kind of an interesting twist this year and um mm-hmm. just like we noticed that with the exception of maybe one like Candyman only killed like white people so <laughs> normally in films it's the black people who get killed yeah. but it's like I in mean this film. to be fair they they deserved it so <laughs> And it's Jordan it's Peele's cool. production, but it was right. directed by a woman. So it was like, which oh, is really this is cool. interesting. Yeah. yeah. It was very entertaining as a film though. Cause there's a little bit of an homage to Philip Glass's opening music mm-hmm. and yeah. it's very interesting. Yeah. I am. Um, I'm really sad that I can't handle scary movies because I, I like, I really like Jordan Peele's films mm-hmm. and by films, I mean, I've seen get out and that's it. Um, because which was on the edge it, it because it wasn't actually like scary i was able to handle it whereas like us looks terrifying and then Candyman looks terrifying like i can't do it but i want to because i'm so intrigued by his filmmaking and and like all of that those themes that are really layered there that i think are phenomenal yeah i want to watch them so bad but i know that i'm not actually going to be able to watch and then i'm gonna have to watch like the office afterwards to like <laughs> put myself in a mood where I'm not <laughs> parks and rec will get you terrified. sobered up parks and quick. rec. Yeah, yeah. Like, but yeah, so I just, it makes me, it kind of bumps me out. Like I want them to make just another, even on like the get out level where it's, it's like creepy, but it's not scary. And then you realize like afterwards, like, Oh, that wasn't scary. It's just that, you know, all the things. Yeah. Um, you get, you hit yeah, it right I on the just, head. It, it it's yeah. layered. It's so layered. Even Candyman, I was just impressed because I went back and watched the original Candyman. And it was like they connected the two, and it was just like, oh, oh really? They did a good job. Yeah, because oh, I had never so seen awesome. the original, but now going back mm-hmm. with those two connected, now it was just kind of like this has a lot more like social based, you know, things in it than I 
thought Candyman had originally. So yeah, um, that's that's good to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I'm just I'm looking forward to seeing all of the things he continues to do because he's amazing. Yeah. Speaking of uh, sobering up, uh, the Emmys. <laughs> Our series that we watched this year, like Ted Lasso, Succession, they all won Emmys. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're cleaning up, apparently. Yeah. Um, Understandably so, though. Yeah. Yeah. And the Ted crown. Lasso. Oh, the crown. Oh, my gosh. The, just a yeah. bunch of awful, which, I mean, Succession, too. Awful, just rich, white people who, quite frankly, don't actually deserve all the things that they have, but they have them anyway. And just watching the drama and, like, how awful they treat each other right seep through um that's i mean that's really it but yeah i can't stop yeah and then also one of your favorites uh last week tonight one <gasps> you know in their category so mm-hmm. i love john oliver yeah hacks that was a good comedy I, I again like a lot of these i found because of the emmys is like mm-hmm. i was thinking about it but i didn't I didn't know if it was any good, right? <laughs> right, exactly. So, this kind of validates it a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's some that that are coming out soon that haven't come out quite yet. Sort of like the Matrix, where you know you've been waiting for a long time, and it's finally almost here. We just have to wait like twelve more days. Uh, but I know The Witcher is like the biggest one, probably for me. Mm-hmm. I the moment that I finished season one, I was like, I need season two tomorrow. <laughs> and I've thought about it way too much since nice. then. Um, but it's yeah, dang it, I'm excited for that one. Have That's, to watch it back again just to you know re up where oh, you are. One hundred percent. But that'll take me two days. So at that point, then I'm just a crazy person. Like whoever like pays attention to people streaming on on Netflix is gonna be like, okay. This lady is a psychopath. Somebody well, then you don't her. have to wait for your dual watching experience. <laughs> <laughs> there, the shared that. view or whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah. The shared that. series. <laughs> shared series. Um, what else did you watch? What else do you like? Oh, man. So Ted Lasso was a big one for me because uh, we watched season one this year. And then like right before season two came out. And so then we were able to watch season two right away, which is phenomenal. Um fell in love with it that's like the one show that i tell every single human like you've got to you've got to watch it even if you just order order uh subscribe to apple tv plus or whatever for one month and blow through it like it's so worth it Mm -hmm. that is one show that's like the most happy like heartwarming show that's ever been made it's incredible i still think about coach beard's night out (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh It's just so good. Everything about that show is so good. All those characters. I love them so much. The exception of Nate. Um, (laughs) But that's okay. Um, Another show that I actually loved, and I loved season one of this when it came out in 2020, and now season two, um, is Love Life. So season one focused on Anna Kendrick, and then season two focused on William Harper. I'm going to say his name wrong, guys. I swapped the two. William Jackson Harper. I don't know why I swapped his last names. Um, But he's, I love him from The Good Place, like major crush on that guy. Um, And so when I saw he was going to be in this season, this, this, uh, for the show, I got really excited. And I mean, he's amazing, you know, doesn't disappoint. Like it was a fantastic season. Um, I laughed, I cried, I did all the things. And um, I blew through that so quickly. Highly recommend to everyone. Essentially, if you've ever been in any kind of relationship, you should watch it. So everybody just go watch it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, how about you? Uh, I got, there was a moment there, a moment of insanity where I watched nothing but like reality based shows. <laughs> oh my God. You love it. Oh. You love it. Um, the Circle what was your on Netflix. Favorite one? circle on netflix yeah um it's kind of like social media because everyone's like locked in like they were in lockdown or nowadays you know you're streaming in for work or social life that's Mm -hmm. what we do most of the time yeah um or at least for me i'll speak for myself um (laughs) and it's just like okay this is Mm -hmm. life like 
socializing, but by yourself, like right. with, a, with a, interacting with a computer, basically. And yeah, it's interesting how dramas, how things are interpreted from other sides. Like everyone interprets it differently. And it's just like, huh, that's interesting. So for me, it was kind of interesting just seeing the social experiment of it kind of. Yeah. Even though it's kind of, you know, mm, not scripted, but, you know, they push it in a certain direction for certain people, maybe. That's just right. how shows work. But. Yeah, which I, I think at this point, we all kind of know that and expect it mm. when you watch something like that. So that makes right. sense. Midnight Mass. I love that. Same creator of uh, like The Haunting of Hill House and um, Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, hmm. He also did like Doctor Sleep. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, same filmmaker. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, watch. I'm looking forward to The Witcher, and then I caught up to all of Killing Eve, so I can watch mm-hmm. the last season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still have to watch that one. <laughs> it's good. It's good. You won't be disappointed. So, mm-hmm. I do love Sandra O. Oh, so, yeah, strong female leads. It's just mm-hmm. like this is good. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't they make more like female characters like these? You know, it's right? just like yeah. Yeah. Like people want that. Yeah. Because they're drawn to that. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just plug one more time because I, I know that y'all aren't tired of it. You want it. Um, there were some solid MCU series that happened this year. Oh, uh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Like uh, WandaVision. It was oh, really God. cool. Wanda it was a Vision. really cool, like, twisty like take on on an mcu on like yeah. mcu characters in a story i thought it was really interesting loved what they ended up doing with it loved that you had no idea what the hell was going on in the beginning or even the middle right. um introduced a couple of like new awesome characters which was really exciting mm-hmm. um yeah so i thought that that was that was fantastic loki was phenomenal um uh, i want to get into that yeah mm-hmm. that's yeah we won't spoil that one for you. It's on the drip. Since Alan hasn't hasn't seen yet, <laughs> the but it was slow really drip really for good. Me, so it's like <laughs> yeah, um, I thought Owen Wilson actually did a great job. Mm. Uh, loved that he was in it. He was really good. Him and Tom Hiddleston have a really good dynamic. Um, so that was fun. And then um, I don't remember the, the actress's name, but she's like one of the main characters in it. Um, one of Owen Wilson's friends. She was also in the first season of um, the morning show. Mm. She's a phenomenal actress. Um, if you, if, if you also haven't seen the morning show, you should definitely watch it. It's on Apple TV plus um, season one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so, yeah, I thought, I thought those were really, really good. The series. What if was good. It was fun animated plus getting to hear Chadwick Boseman as black Panther again, really warmed my heart made me tear up a little bit uh so yeah yeah there's there was some solid mcu movement on the uh the series front as well yeah one division i liked that they brought in um the daughter from captain mm-hmm. marvel what was her name yeah. in that uh no i don't remember the character's name right but i yeah when i heard the name i was like and then they talked about you know, Captain Marvel and how she knew her. And it was just like when she was young and I was like, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Cause it was in like the nineties or something. Yeah. And now like she's it. of age. So mm-hmm. like 30, 20, 30 somewhere. Yeah. So, Monica Rambo. Right. What was the character yeah. name? Do you remember? That's the, that's the character name. Oh, Rambo. Okay. Yeah. Rambo. So her name is Tayona Paris, but oh, the character's I see, name I is see. Monica Rambo. Yeah. That's right. So good. Yeah, because she's a little girl in Captain Marvel. So, mm-hmm. and then Randall Park, I thought did really well. Oh there. yes, I love him. <laughs> he, he's so fun. He's so good. He's always funny whenever I just can't help it. Like, okay, what's he yeah. gonna do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. What's he gonna say? You know. Exactly. Um, your enthusiasm is still going. I mean, what has it spent like twenty years since Seinfeld? He's still doing it. So it's like it's wild. Yeah, still as goofy as ever. 
Fun fact, I've never seen an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Mm. Well, never. you can just start at like the current season. You don't have to go all the <laughs> way back. I mean, which is kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a made you can man. Do that. <laughs> Larry <Yeah>. David. <laughs> Wild. Well, that's wrapping it up for what we watched. That took up like an hour. No. <laughs> It's because half an hour of it is me talking about the Eternals. Mm. I, just, I get real, real riled up about about nothing in particular. Yeah, and we we've <laughs> had this new format of podcasting for a while now, for this year and last year. Mm-hmm. Um, at least yeah. we were able to have guests on this year. Um, Thankfully. Yeah. Yeah, so. and for a while last year it was just us. Um, which I'm sure everyone super loves. And so they're really excited about this episode too. But uh, <laughs> It's back yeah. for a limited time. <laughs> Very limited. Just like soda. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's been awesome getting to have people on again. And I actually, I've been really enjoying this because not only are we able to do this format, this virtual format, but now we can still see each other and our guests. Mm-hmm. so we're still having full-blown conversations right i really like it yeah no, and cuts down on the commute so mm-hmm. and it's allowed <laughs> us to have you know guests on that maybe wouldn't normally have time to drive somewhere and sit down and meet or right. maybe they don't even live into i mean we had a quentin on quentin yeah. lives in in france yeah just outside paris yeah yeah like he would not have been able to be on the podcast two years ago so right. it's yeah so it's definitely allowed us to expand we had courtney on she doesn't live in minnesota anymore um so i i think that it's an awesome new format yeah people working outside of minnesota or for minnesota films like quentin was and mm-hmm. just people we can start connecting to hopefully yeah um and hopefully some of that film community starts coming to minnesota now after we talk to melody and such and people like uh philip up north Mm -hmm. so with catalyst and then all the events going on that are kind of backish they're like hybrid versions maybe now uh some of them um so that's that's an interesting kind of like the new normal that we're Mm -hmm. adjusting to kind of yeah, like a hybrid, which mm-hmm. I think is the way that everything's going to go at this point. Yeah, I, I foresee that for the next, yeah. at least next two years, I'd say, mm-hmm. uh, at the very least. Um, yeah, so. 100%. Um, and then we look to the future, our future goals. What do you think, Rohana? What should we do? <laughs> <laughs> All the things. Um <laughs> I mean, man, there, there are a lot of things I would love to do with this, you know, like, like have a, a incorporate a visual element, you know, like I'm able to see you when we have a guest, we're able to see them, you know, and, and really bring that to, to our listeners too, even in little bits, you know, maybe a YouTube channel, maybe, maybe we can uh, come up with a, a cool web page and we've talked about that and really start start linking you know things from our guests as you know they're sharing on on these web <laughs> words are hard web pages um as they're sharing on these episodes you know like this is how people get in contact with me this is how you can watch my stuff this is my social media like linking these things and and making things really accessible to our listeners and also for the film community as they you know learn about everyone here um and even us you know and really just bringing that additional element to everyone um, i think is is the next step for us really yeah you can i can start a blog and you can start a youtube channel so yeah (laughs) (laughs) i guess i'll just have to wash my hair before that's fine that's yeah yeah. you guys i'll do that for you guys okay (laughs) no dry shampoo today it'll be (laughs) full-blown washed it's a girl. Every female in this will understand what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to understand Ellen. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, um, I think that's really where I would love to take this. Yeah. I like that, that idea of showcasing our guests and um, 
get bringing that, like you said, the visual element forward because uh, we're talking about mm-hmm. films and shows and it's yeah. very much a show me business. So let's, or, you know, art form. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see if we can share these things and show people what people are up to exactly. So, um, yeah, I remember seeing, I think it was Josh who we had on very long ago, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who did the series that is starting. I think it's, they released a trailer for it. So, mm-hmm. um, excited to see what that's all about since it's all like medieval ish time. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. It's going to be really cool. Sword fights and such. So, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, so we'll hopefully have our new website up in the new year. Mm-hmm. That's and or at least a YouTube channel of sorts. Yeah. Uh, to collect like where are your films? Send us your links, you know. Uh, yeah. for anyone who's making films here. So Yeah, just you know, one more format for everyone to really get your stuff out there. Um with really you know, the, the goal in mind to connect with others, um, you know, other like-minded, creative, ambitious, um, local people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see what, you know, we can compile for everyone and what, you know, you can see from everyone's work. So. Exactly. That's, that's our goal, not our resolution, our goal, or what was it that you, you called the focus, focus. our focus. (laughs) Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much to everyone who listened, um, you know, not just today, but not just to this episode, but all year. Um, you know, you guys are, yeah. are the reason that we're here, reason we're trying to bring you these guests and information and maybe just a fun hour break from a crazy day, month, year, all those things. Yeah, um, we get it. Yeah. So we, we really appreciate you listening to us and um, and for those who've been on the podcast, those who take the time, um, you know, you're, you're a big part of our year and it means a lot. All the support does. Um, until next year, have some great holidays and we'll see you soon. Bye.